everybody. It's Miranda Patron here. I have been asked to do a video just talking about the brushes that I use and how I use them in my painting. Um, also just the general care of how I take care of them. So that's what we're going to do today is talk about brushes. Okay, so first off we're just going to talk the basic anatomy of a brush. So you obviously know the handle part. Um, there's a little part here where it is held on to the handle um, called the crimp. And then this part here, I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced because I've only ever seen it written, but I think it's ferrule, F-E-R-R-U-L-E. -E. And then this part is called the heel. Um, and then you have the belly of your brush bristle, the bristles, and then I think the top is called the toe, but that's not really necessary to paint, so <laughs> to know how to paint. Um, so just a basic idea. These ones are just cheap, like budget type brushes that I got at my local craft store a long time ago. Um, and they work really well, the synthetic type brushes. I think that if you're using oil paints, it would be nice if you could afford to do the sable brushes, but if you're just doing acrylic painting, you don't really need to go for the super expensive sable type brushes. Um, when you're painting with acrylics, it's good to keep the brushes uh, wet, damp, so I always have a jar of water sitting here with me that you can see. Um, it just makes them easier to work with and then the paint doesn't dry in the bristles so every time I'm done with a color I usually clean it and leave it in the water just for the duration of my painting. Um, so another thing I want to mention is the measurements always vary um, from manufacturer to manufacturer with brushes. Um, so I can't really refer to a size. People are asking me what size brushes I use. Like this, this one is from China and it's a one half or a one over two. Um, so I honestly don't remember on this one what that <laughs> meant. So I know usually they do like the length, which is the distance from the edge of the ferrule to the top of the brushes um, in the center. And then the diameter across like a round one is the point where the ferrule ends and the hair begins. So there's all these specifics that I don't usually get into so but it's hard for me to say the sizes um, when I have so many different brushes here. I know the ones by Princeton here I can give you the manufacturer and what their numbers are but as far as the other ones, some of them are so old that I've been painting with, I honestly, some of them I can't even see anymore. I can see that this one was from China too, but I can't even see the number. So, But there's other companies too that have grips on them. This one is from Plaid. Um, it's a size 3. It's a spotter. So I can use that to make little dots as well. So it just varies on what you're comfortable with. See this one also a size 3 too, made by Simply Brushes. So that's obviously not the same size as this one. But I can give you a ballpark or if I can find the ones that I've been using online I can let you know in the videos. Or I try to usually. So I hope that's helpful. Generally when you're picking out brushes too you want to pick the ones where the size fits the area so you know this one's about the width of my thumb so I could do a larger area with that type of brush um, I tend to use um, sponge brushes also definitely for varnish because I use a brush on varnish and it doesn't leave marks um, they just these ones just have a wooden handle they're like 29 cents a piece at our store and it doesn't leave brush marks it's very gentle and I can also paint backgrounds with that. Um, it's actually more versatile than you would think. So I use that often, but we'll show that a little bit later here. But just think in general, larger size area, larger brush. So if you're doing tiny, tiny dots, then obviously we would want something like these type of liner brushes 
to help us paint the little dots. I think this one actually somebody said in one of the videos it's a makeup liner brush. But I honestly have no idea where it came from. <laughs> Sometimes stuff just shows up in our house and we use it. Alright, the first thing I think I will show is the larger sponge brush. A lot of times I like to use these for my backgrounds um, on larger stones. If I'm doing one of my island escapes or some type of scenery, I just find it more useful to then it blends all the colors all at once. Okay, so I have some paint here. I'll just show like a general sunset type theme and that's going to be with the sponge brush. So I just kind of pour them sometimes on my canvas or stone so that they just meld into one another. And if it's a decent sized area, these are helpful to use because then I already have the paint down on the item that I'm painting. Um, so then I get my sponge brush out here and I will just dip it in all three at once to kind of blend them together. And there's different ways, like a sunset, I can just do my background like this and just drag it across and they blend nicely. You can do all sorts of wave mo movements. Say I was doing this in the water, or if you wanted to show wind, um, you can do even t petals for flowers with this on a larger type scale. Just kind of swoop it up and over. Then you get a really nice flower petal that's just like a one stroke type. Sorry, we'll get a little more paint on there. You can also pour these on your palette to do it on from a palette as well. And this is just a, a quick, obviously. So there's lots you can do with them. Depending on the type of painting you're doing too. I mean, it could be abstract. You could just do designs and then double blend them in together in the opposite direction. I mean, there's just so many things you can do with just that one brush. So the next brush I like to use a lot is this one. It's just a soft round acrylic brush. And actually this one needs some attention. As you can see here, one of the things that is important with the brushes is to keep them well-groomed, I guess. <laughs> so I like to trim a lot of the extra bristles that stick out off the sides. Sometimes there's only a couple, you can just pluck them out. Um, but you know, when you're painting, you don't want that stray if you're trying to do something precise like dots. It makes it really difficult to do the dots if you have all these spray, stray, pardon me, bristles sticking out. So, but this one I can use to do the larger dot. So I'll just get a little bit of turquoise here and you can just do a larger dot with this one. And like I said, those stray bristle, bristles need to be trimmed so that I could get a better dot. But it's, um, it's useful for larger dots or you could also use it for the painting of the background. Sometimes you can just blend like this and then put the next color on while it's still wet and blend that one in. If you were doing waves on an ocean or something like that, you can always do your next color while they're still wet. It'll help you blend. To just blend them in like that and then you just don't have a clear-cut line across so you get kind of the oceany look and I don't push down too hard and keep working at it because a lot of times then you'll start getting bristle marks um, and sometimes I don't want that on a piece so I don't use them with a lot of pressure So this one is just a smaller round acrylic. Like I said, the sizes on these are weird. So this one is a half inch long bristle, but it says size two. <laughs> but you can do dots with any size, soft round acrylic brush. And you can get the synthetic bristles, like I said. A lot of what helps us with the dots is the fact that the paint is a good consistency. So this is water-based acrylics. And you can see it gets a good drip off of, off of the brush. And you can just kind of work it around into the size that you need. Sometimes also what I'll do, especially with the smaller dots, here's my dot, um, sorry, my spot angle detailer. 
angle spot detailer, I guess, from Princeton. And while something is still wet, I can always steal from that dot if I want to do smaller ones around it like this. You can just steal the paint. and work it around the dots that you already have and then you're not running back and forth to the palette to reload your brush or even if you're doing um, the nail dotting tools people like to use you can just grab it from the dots that you have that are damp if you're using the same colors like that the smaller detailer brush also is one that I like to use when I'm going around. If you're doing a mandala and you want to go around it with a design or if you want to add some <laughs> comma strokes or other detail work that are not dots, these are great for that. And you can just kind of add in the little flare that you want to add to your mandala stones. And then you also have people, they, they do a dot drag, but it's also a comma stroke with a paintbrush that you can just push down hard initially and then just let up at the end to get the little tail of your stroke. And they come out pretty. It gives an added effect to any kind of design that you're doing or pattern. So when you're done doing your artwork and you pull all your paint brushes out of your water jar or cup or whatever you're using, it's a really good idea to make sure, this is what I do anyway, is I dry them initially, but then I also keep them on their side to dry. I don't put my paintbrushes end up, like a lot of people hold them uh, end up to dry and I don't like to do that because a lot of times what will happen is water gets down in your ferrule and it will rust and I mean the really good ones are probably made of decent metal and they won't rust but you can see this one got left in the water for a while and the wood handle even started cracking and my kids like to do that, leave them in the water. <laughs> but see, even this, the paint is coming off the sides of the handle, which is really unfortunate. It's not the best way to treat your brushes. So I like to let them dry on their side. Then they also keep their shape. I'm not sure if you air dry them standing up how that would change it, but obviously not point down. And that way the water doesn't get up in the sides. But you can see on this one too, there are different types of brushes. This is one of the flat angled brushes. But this one was wood handled and got left so that water soaked up into the ferrule and got all up the handle and cracked. So it's a lot of times I like these ones because they're the plastic handle. And then you have, obviously this isn't going to happen because the paint's not going to crack. It's not wood, it doesn't swell. So, yeah. So this brush here. Um, the makeup one, it's a liner detailer. It does the same little dots that this one does. And you can get it now, I think Target has them. They're the eyeliner brushes. And they even have angled ones now for $3. Um, the Princeton one, I think on their website, they're selling for $7.96. I got this one at my local store for $3.75. Um, I've seen them online at other stores for that much as well, the wholesale stores, um, Artsarama type things like that. Um, but yeah, so these ones too are just the synthetic soft round acrylic brushes. Okay, well that is the basics of what I have. I don't want to go too far into detail, but if you all have more questions I'd be happy to answer them. And I look forward to doing more videos. I hope you enjoyed watching. Please feel free to like and share it. And leave some great feedback below. And let me know anything that you would like to see in videos. Or other things you want to see painted. Different brush strokes. I can do that for you as well. 
I am looking forward to this and I hope that you have a great day.